Hi, Carolyn Burgess here. Today we're going to talk about depression and anxiety and my holistic three-prong approach to addressing these health issues. So first, if you suffer from anxiety or depression, you know how debilitating and, uh, and, and painful these situations can be. They rob us of our, our joy, our happiness, and our peace, and they rob our families of the joy and happiness and peace that could flow through us to them. I personally have suffered both from depression and anxiety, and it's something I have to be mindful of. I have to take care of myself so I don't slip back into that, those patterns. However, my experience that I have uh, and my walk through depression and anxiety have really created a tender place in my heart for people who do suffer from these illnesses and hence the creation of my three-pronged holistic approach. So let's take a look at that approach. First, we have to address the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual needs of the individual suffering from dep depression and or anxiety. So take a look at the physical component. First, we have neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters are the brain hormones that, uh, like serotonin and dopamine and GABA, that when released, we will feel a certain way. We can feel happy, we can feel at peace. And when the body can create them properly, then we'll experience that happiness and peace. However, things can go awry and we cannot uh, have this release that would be optimal of neurotransmitters. Uh, also, we have to take a look at our adrenals. Now, our adrenals are our stress handling glands. And over time, the adrenals can uh, become less efficient at helping the body and its coping mechanisms of stressors. So this is a condition called adrenal fatigue. And we've seen that individuals that suffer from depression or anxiety, they tend to have uh, some compromised issues with the adrenals they need, and they tend to need a little bit more support there. And then diet. We want to make sure that we're bringing in the right foods that are uh, not stressful on the body, and we want to bring in foods that are life-giving. And everyone's a little different, so we want to make sure that it's tailored to you. Now, as far as the creation of the neurotransmitter, we have to have proper amino acids. We have to get the right proteins in. For the adrenals, there's certain B vitamins and minerals. We want to make sure we get those in. And then also in diet, I like to add in the, home the correct homeopathics, the correct herbals, and the correct whole food remedies to really really bring that body and, and, and give it the right direction and the right blueprint and the right support. So that's working at the physical level and that's, that's lovely and that's wonderful. And as a traditional naturopath, I did that for a good 10 to 15 years. And in about that 10 year mark, I started working a little bit more on the emotional level because what I realized is that working at just the physical level alone will not work. And here's why. Because we have at the emotional level, we want to take a look at childhood experiences. Now, a child comes into the world just like a little sponge. They're taking everything in. And every life experience that they have, they're learning something. And they're creating a new file or kind of a new neural pathway in their brain. I like to call them little files. So the child learns, you know, they're loved or, or they're not loved. They're lovable or they're not lovable. The world is safe, the world is scary. You know, every experience that the child has contributes to their filing system. Now, when, in, when we are ex, uh, exposed to a stressor, the body wants to either fight, flight, or, f or freeze. So a child can't typically fight, a child can't typically flee. So what does a child do? The child freezes. And when it freezes, it stores that trauma in the body. We know this now, and there's been studies that reveal that early childhood traumatic experiences, and even adult tra traumatic experiences, they get stored in the body tissues in the way of, of toxins, and uh, it's, like, it's a pattern, and it's, it's, a, it's a chemical pattern that's stored in the body. So the body will actually store traumatic experiences in the body. And then we also have our subconscious. So our subconscious runs about 90 to 95% of our thoughts and our behaviors. So where does our subconscious come from? It's that filing system that we've created throughout our whole lifetime, beginning before, before we were born. So all those life experiences life experiences the total sum is our subconscious so if we do all this lovely work at the physical level and we get the right diet the right homeopathics the right herbs and we're just doing everything perfectly but we have a filing system a subconscious filing system that tells us we're not good enough we're not smart enough we're not worthy of love and the world is scary this will never get us there as a matter of fact we're going to spin our wheels and it's going to be so hard to even reach balance when the body's constantly struggling. So then we have the spiritual level down here. So 
studies show that individuals that that have spiritual practices and uh, and practice them on a regular basis, they fare well not only with anxiety and depression but other health issues. So we're going to take a look at: Do you have a relationship with God or a higher power? Do you have you know a relationship that calls you into greater uh, into greater peace and happiness? And how often do you practice that? So those of you that know me, I'm a devout Catholic, and I attend Mass on a very regular basis, almost every day, and I spend significant amount of time in Adoration Chapel, just being present with God and being in that space of contemplation and prayer and quiet. And I'm just going to tell you, miracles happen when you do that. Now, I don't, I'm not going to tell you you have to be Catholic or you have to do it the way I do it. We have to do it the way you do it. However, I can only speak from my experience on this note and what I know works. So I share that with you. So I want to talk a little bit here on gener on, about generational patterns in this spiritual area. When we take a look at uh, the generational patterns of those that came before us and kind of think here, you know, sins of the father carried down to the third and the fourth generation. We have seen now, and now there's been some studies that show there's actual uh, imbalances in uh, generations of, of individuals who have, where there has been trauma in the previous generations. And uh, there's a, a group of uh, Holocaust survivors, and this is one particular study. And they looked at 64 individuals, 32 couples, and what they noticed uh, with these Holocaust survivors is that they had a it was, the, the DNA wasn't changed, but there was like a tagging that had happened. And that tagging was indicative of post-traumatic stress syndrome, which is not a big surprise. However, what they noticed is that their offspring, who did not experience the Holocaust, had that same tag, that, that same tag that is indicative of post-traumatic stress syndrome. So sometimes we have to look, take a look at what came before us and you know the, the pains and the traumas, because that also affects us at a deeper spiritual level, which comes back full circle to a physical level, because we see that this affects our physical body. However, when we take a look at those spiritual needs combined with the emotional needs and the physical needs, we have, in my opinion, a holistic three-prong approach that really works to help individuals to achieve the peace and the happiness and really the freedom from depression or anxiety. So if you'd like to take a look and see if you'd be a good candidate for this type of care, just click on the link below. I have a short little questionnaire and I have a free gift for you. I will give you my free ebook, How to Discover Real Happiness. And uh, just, you know, you can experience more out of life. And I invite you to begin living that life today. And remember, my friends, live healthy and live happy, live holy and live.